Hello, people of the internet. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Uh, happy Tuesday to you all. Or if you're watching this at any other point in the week, hope you're today. Hopefully, you are having a great day nonetheless. I have gone off, made some dinner, eaten dinner, wrote a couple of important emails for uni work, and now we are back. We've waited long enough to where we have lyric videos for all of the B sides. And now that means we can go ahead and move forward with the absolute whopper of an album in X Nary Heroes' troubleshooting studio length album. 10 tracks long, 10 tracks of K Band goodness, and X Nary Heroes doing what X Nary Heroes does best. And I'm tremendously excited for it. To save a little bit of time, we're not gonna do the title track again because we've already spent some time on that. And. I was considering doing the um, the instrumental album sampler, but again, it may be down to a time constraint thing because it is currently quarter to nine in the evening, and I have an early morning tomorrow. I still have to go and upload this, make thumbnails and stuff of that nature, and I reckon this will probably take until like 10 p.m. to do. So, um, unfortunately, we're not going to be covering that. I'm sorry. It's just I would rather have some form of sleep tonight, so... Um, yeah. Anyways, we have got nine B-sides to get through, so let's get through them sharpest, shall we? Here we go! It is still stupidly warm here. Um, I thought maybe now that like the sun had gone down, it's per pro like, properly into the evening time that having windows and doors open would be nice and cool. But it is like stagnant air everywhere. There's no breeze and it's hot. Anyways, we got to start because we've got a ton of songs to get through. This is track uh, number one, No Matter. Lyrics by Shimunji and x Heroes. Hero. So I guess... When it comes to x Nary Heroes credits, um, they're not listing individual members, they're just listing the group, which is perfectly fine by me. Uh, composition is Shimunji, Ihe Sol, and the members with Ihe Sol on arrangements. Alright, here we go. Getting some harmonies early. Oh. Oh, Juno with some slide to that. I love how, like, open-ended the way the song starts. Because now that we're, like, filling in the bottom end, but... The harmonies. No matter Yeah, this one, maybe it is uh, partly, partly down to the like studio mixing thing again, but this one's got plenty in the trebles and the bass. I like it. You can feel the weight on the song. I love that really fast, like, oscillating guitar part in the background. Very cool texture. For some reason, this is like nostalgic to me. Oh, oh, good no, speak to me. <laughs> 
yeah, something about the sound of this song is nostalgic to me. Let it build. <laughs> what a spectacular bridge. Think about me now, Oh, and a nice firm finish, too. Ooh, we are off to a great start. This is like, this is like, no matter for this troubleshooting album is what Freddy was for Live Lock for me. Oh, yes. It's high energy, it's got crunch, it's got grit, it's got the brightness, it's got the heaviness, and it's got the vocals to match. Ooh, hoo, hoo. Yeah, I kept saying it was nostalgic before I got lost in the sauce, but there's, for reference, I grew up listening to 80s rock music. So, you know, you're more like American stuff, your hair metal stuff, your second wave British invasion, your German metals. So, like, rock music I'm very tapped in with, or at least the older stuff. Exonary Heroes is specifically No Matter. Reminds me of a sound that a group used to do from, like, the very beginning of the 90s. I can't even remember who it was, but just the overabundance of that moving guitar part in the background that adds such a pretty kind of almost melodic trill in the instrumental section. Plenty of double vocals, that gorgeous guitar solo to boot. Yeah. I, oh, it sucks that I can't remember who it is that I'm trying to think of, but I like that we are off to a great start. And well, usually we would have gone to Little Things, because that's track number two. I'll read through the credits just for the... Giggles, but lyrics by the members, composition Yu Min of Collapse Dawn and the members, and then Yu Min on arrangements. That leaves, leads us to, as I'm just in the chair, track uh, number three, Undefined. Lyrics by Suan from 153 Joombus. Composition, uh, exact same as Little Things. Okay, so Collapse Dawn, uh, Yu Min and the members on composition, Yu Min on arrangements. Okay, we're walking. This is perfect walking pace, isn't it? Like, you can strut to this. Oh. Oh, get pretty with it. Nice. Let the song get loud as Julian sings get loud. Love that. I wish I had my guitar. Oh. Once again, we're kind of going down into like my genre of rock music from the 80s. I wish. This is even more nostalgic than No Matter for me. And I love how prominent that bass part is. It's like you can hear every hit on the bass string so clearly. Oh, 
that entry for the chorus is spectacular. It's got so much bite to it. And we get this post-chorus again. I thought they'd maybe cut it off and go straight to the bridge, but... I guess this is a K-Man, so typical pop song conventions don't apply here. Interesting layering going on vocally. There was a final hit in there. I was kind of hoping we got like a meaty guitar solo on that, but I'm not too upset by that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When I say that chorus drop has bite to it, oh my goodness. And the fact that the lyrics kind of call in the crunchy drop too. Extra little touch that I very much approve of. I love clever stuff like that, but wow. I wonder if this... This hasn't really ever happened on Next Nary Heroes album before. I mean, admittedly, I've only ever properly listened through Live Lock and Deadlock, so the last two albums, because, well, we got to do it here, together. Um, but I don't think I've gotten such a heavy sense of nostalgia from, like, my childhood and the, t the genre of rock music that I listened to growing up as I have from this Troubleshooting album. And we're three songs in, and like that nostalgia is overflowing never gonna complain by that though like i love going back to that 80s rock sound because i mean it's an era from before i was born but it's what my childhood was and whenever you i can like kind of teleport myself back to those times where it was just like carelessly no, not carelessly, but like carefree music listening, things like that. That sense of nostalgia is always going to be nice, but undefined. Man, this was... If I... I mentioned this on the title track, but my building doesn't allow musical instruments. If I still had my guitar, I, this would be such a fun album to play along with, because you can just... That crunch and that heaviness is so nice to play along to because it you feel like you have so much power in your hands when you play along to a song of this nature oh i miss my guitar man oh but we have to keep moving this is painted track number four lyrics by the members and huang lin uh huang lin and the members on composition with huang lin on our arrangements it looks like we're starting right away Nice start. Why is this one kind of giving me like FIFA OST vibes right now? I don't know what FIFA game it is, but I feel like this song would, wouldn't be out of place on a FIFA soundtrack. <laughs> Nice release. Yeah, it's still giving me FIFA OST vibes. I'm not mad by it though. Double up the reference? Wow, what a cool chorus! Let Jungsoo and Jiyoon get melodic, get Kong and Odu on the rap, and then get Jiyoon with the sass back into the hook. Cool octave layering. 
way to the end. the main top line, and there's one more identical and octave lower. It's like, um, Zuho's part in SF9's puzzle. I like that. Nice little slide from over there, just... Oh, guitar slide, have your moment. Oh, half time in. Back to full time. Nice long run up to the re entry. Yeah, this part is so cool. So let's go. that i love that it's one of those songs where you can get involved with plenty of gang vocals you know you get jones and it's oh let's go into the i love stuff like that it's like whenever a group or an artist makes a song where the crowd can get involved it's always going to be a great time but when you have a song that's got this kind of almost like dance dancing like up and down vibe to it where the beat kind of naturally skips on itself like that where you know there's a natural kind of hop skip and a jump in the beat like that it's already gonna get the crowd kind of energized but then you get a moment like the ra -pa -ra -pa, where you know imagine a live stage the crowd singing that part Ooh, i love that mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah did anyone like if anyone out there has played like the old FIFA games from like you know the early 2010s? I think you'll get what I mean by when I say FIFA OST, but or FIFA soundtrack. That's nice. That's nice. It's I like that we're getting different flavors, but the overall sound still has that distinct you know X Nero Heroes crunch and bite to it. It's, I may go back and listen to little things on my own, just like the studio recording version of it, and see if it has the bite that I felt like was missing a little bit in the MV, but no complaints here. All right, let's keep her moving. Track on number five, Money on My Mind. Me too, fam, me too. Uh, it was utilities day today, and I'm down some money. Anyways, Money on My Mind, lyrics by Yisolbi of Artifact... And then uh, composition and arrangements, same people from Paint It. So Huang Lin and Exner Heroes on composition, Huang Lin on uh, arrangements. Kind of giving me Deep Purple Highway Star vibes right now. Oh, they cut out everything apart from one guitar and the drum. Okay, not so much Highway Star anymore, but there's still that kind of high octane vibe right now. Come on! Come on! Oh, this one chugs. Hold on a second. We got the Highway Star vibe back. Oh, 
that even in this transition like post chorus part we still don't lose that pace Oh, and straight into the break here. Come on, come on, come on. Holy drum fill. I love this. This is my this is my B-side of the album so far. Oh my goodness. This is such a tasty core, uh, not chorus, tasty guitar solo. Oh, Jun Han, that was spectacular. Give me some stacking one time. This is so good. <laughs> that is terrific. It's um like this for me is the closest that I've heard any K band get to a sound signature that is akin to Deep Purple's Highway Star or Motley Crue's um, Kickstart My Heart. That is terrific. It's so fast, and it's consistently fast, and immediately off the rip, you feel that pace, and it just keeps going, and it feels like it's going faster, but you don't care that it's going faster because the speed is everything. Like, I need that injected into my veins for when I'm typing this paper tomorrow. Wow! But also, I think the part about Money on My Mind for me is the fact that the instrumental section can hold down such a fast pace not lose it at any point and just feel like there's just a constant supply of nitrous being like expended for the song like not at one point not one not one point there we go not one point does it feel like this song needs to slow down at all that is hard to do on a song that's this fast also, Junhan's solo is spectacular. I'm pretty sure Gunil's on drums, right? Gunil, with that crispy drum fill into verse 2, or into the second chorus. Must have been around here, right? There it is. Oh, that's a crispy drum fill right there. Woohoo! Yeah, the instrumentals actually shout out them on this one. Yeah, that's terrific. Money on my mind, beast out of the album for me right now. But we must move because we are now into half two of the album. It's track number six. This is Dreaming Girl, lyrics by Hong Ji Sang and the members. Same on composition, Hong Ji Sang on Hong Ji Sang on arrangement. We have a song in 6 8. I do love a good song in 6 8. It has this like natural kind of back and forth action. Ooh. 
I need to respond to that email after this. Do you hear the background vocals here too? You get a ooh -ah and a ha 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 ha. That's cool. You get three layers in your vocals here. Nice, heavy, slow anthem in six. Liberal amounts of bass drum here too, or the kick. Mm, get saucy on it, Jung Soo. Four part vocals now. That moment of silence right before the drop is so important for a song like this because it allows for the song to settle down and for that big drop to come in and have such a bigger impact on the overall song. Oof. Love a good gang vocal section. One more reset again. The moment of silence, super important. Jungsu's little runs in the chorus for this song is just chef's kiss. Yeah, the little flair Jung Soo adds on the core on his chorus parts is so tasteful. It adds such a nice little it's like a vibrato on steroids just by adding that little run at the end. And then again, gang vocals on an anthem is like a match made in heaven. It's like butter and toast, essentially. Because it's a song where it's got this nice kind of walking pace to it and you're just really enjoying it. It's The song itself already kind of has this back and forth feeling to it. And once you get everyone singing together, it's kind of like a human nature thing where if you see a whole bunch of people singing or saying the same thing, you yourself want to get involved in it. That's why like chants at sporting events work really well is because you want to get involved with what other people around you are doing. If you go to a concert and the crowd is singing along, you instinctively want to do it as well because you want to join in on the fun, so to speak. So when you have a song that is such a nice anthem, like Dreaming Girl, have such a nice, I don't want to say long, but like a nice multi-phase repetitive gang vocal section in the bridge like it did, where all the members are singing together like that, you yourself as a listener want to get involved with it. So... Highly approve of that. I love a little bit of like crowd inclusion on a song. And I think placement on the album is super important too. Because like money on my mind is, you know, 200 miles an hour, foot to the floor. Is... <clears throat> but you get a song like Dreaming Girl that really just, you know, if you listen to the album in order, hits the brakes a little bit, slows it down, holds, holds back the adrenaline a little bit. Very important. Because had we had another song like Money on My Mind immediately following Money on My Mind, oh, we, we'd be going 3,000 miles an hour and it'd take three songs to like slow it back down. 
You can you can't cold turkey stuff like this. You can't go from a ridiculously fast song to a super soppy like really slow ballad. That just doesn't work. It'll feel too disconnected from each other. So Dreaming Girl, perfect song for the location on the album. Moving on, until the end of time, track number seven, lyrics by the members, uh, composition, Zigzag Note, Moon Sang Son, Nokita, and the members, who is Zigzag Note, Moon Sang Son, and Nokita on arrangements. Here we go. All this time, I was blind, I'm a god, Everything's pointing towards another slower anthem. Birthday night, blowing lights, and put I like the piano sample they're using. Power ballad. Hell yeah. Get up there, Julian. What a pretty sustain. But yeah, this is quintessential power ballad territory for me. Did I forget to mention my one of my favorite like subgenres from the 80s rock and metal scene is the power ballad. So I'm right at home here. It's a song that screams for that to happen, right? Cell phones, lighters. I guess lighters not so much anymore, but... Oh, thank God it's not the end. All the whispery, emotive finish. This is why I love the power ballad subgenre, man. You get the heaviness from the instruments, but you get the heaviness from the emotion involved in it. You get this nice, slow pace that really allows for that emotion to sink into the listener. You get the prettiness from the vocals. You get the prettiness from the guitars, guitar solos. And it's just, for me, the perfect power ballad song to come out of Korea right now. I don't think I've heard. Like, there are K-bands out there who do the ballad sound really well, but no one has breached into the cl classic 1980s power ballad side of things until the end of times by x Heroes does that to a T. I love that.
Wow. Again, this album is giving me so much nostalgia. I love it so much. I appreciate this album so much. Next up, track number eight, Walking to the Moon. Lyrics by Kang Yi Rang from Papermaker. Uh, composition Yi Woman of Collapsed Dawn and Exonary Heroes. Arrangement by Yi Woman of Collapsed Dawn. Okay. Interesting, we got an anthem into a power ballad. Because I figured they saved that for the end, but. Well, with the way the last three songs have gone, it's not clearly not the case. Also another one of those like walking type beats. Loving the variety in the vocals we're getting. Having Colin and Oda on the uh, on the pre-courses, nice touch. Again, some movement in the background. Oh, they took it down for the bridge. Hold on. over so fast but I think a very appropriate way to speed the album back up again following a power ballad stay with the kind of walking pace brighten it up a little bit liven it up a little bit but you're not injecting too much it's not fast so you're staying in tempo wise in the same region sound wise we've brightened it up for sure but it still has like the prettiness and the flourishes and the big melodic elements to it. And again, placement wise on the album, it is absolutely perfect. But Walking to the Moon, what does it remind me of? It, it's, I think it's an x Heroes B side from a previous album, but stylistically it reminds me of one. I can't remember the title of. That's annoying. I hate it when that happens. Anyways. We move. Walking to the Moon, I think, in terms of listenability, the easiest song on the album. Because it's like, I mean, even to explain, there's really not a whole lot of explaining needed. It's like soup. You just kind of listen to it, and you get the overall gist of it. So, sometimes you want an easy song to listen to, especially on an album that's quite complex and quite in your face as x Near Heroes can be. So... All right, track uh, number nine. This is Moneyball. Lyrics by the members. Composition Versa Choi, Nico Young, and the members with Versa Choi and Nico Young on our arrangements. All right, ramp it back up again. Moneyball. 
Oh, it's heavy in the bottom end. Very cool start. Heavy in the bottom end, bring in the vocals. Very top. Cool contrast getting going with the whispery rap. Nice flip into the higher tones. Nice to know this album is kind of working in like a sine wave, you know. High intensity, high intensity, bring it back down. Anthem -y, ballad, anthem, high intensity. It's nice and consistent, and it's an easy curve to follow along. Getting the really fast cadence in the rap with the really fast, the same cadence in the instrumental part. Nice unison choice. Big switch into the halftime. I was waiting for this to come back. There it is. Oh, nice long finish. Love that. That is how you inject energy back into an album right there. Whoa. I love how heavy this is. I love how crunchy it is. This song, especially in the instrumental section, never left the floor. It was it stayed so low and had so much bite and the caden rhythmic cadences throughout. Oh, 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 it did everything what I wanted it to. Nice long finish to the song, too. And I have to admit, I don't know if the color coded lyrics, or the line distribution is accurate or not, but if they are accurate, I am, and I feel like I've made this comment before, but Gollum and Ode, or Ode, as the kind of utility members in terms of where they can sit vocally is such a cool textural thing to hear especially because when you have Jungsu and Juyong really start flying high in their vocals they both have that tone to them that I can't really describe using words but if you know you know that tone that they sing in once they start flying up there it's a really distinguishable vocal color that they have Gaon and Ud, for me, especially once they start flying a little bit higher, has, in comparison to Jungsu and Jun, a more neutral, higher tone. And I think they're perfect for a lot of setting up work, especially in like the pre-courses where you feel the song growing, you feel the anticipation growing. And for me, like listening to I don't know, Gaon or Ud hit like a higher note, or hearing their vocal parts start to like climb up the register a little bit, that excitement level increases for me because I'm thinking, oh, something is gonna happen after this, and they're getting they're getting me ready for it. And lo and behold, 
boom, the big drop happens. Dun, 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 and just like, yes, yes, they didn't cold turkey it. They, they led you up to it. And the drop, that bite it has was perfect. And we are now on to the final song on the album, Night of Fireworks. Lyrics by Hong Ji Sung and the members, same on composition, Hong Ji Sung on arrangements. We are actually kind of flying through this pretty quickly, so if we have... I'll, I'll see how we are doing on time afterwards, we might do the album sampler. I also need more tea. I thought we'd take a little bit more time than what actually ended up happening. We're not finishing on a ballad. Hold on a second. Interesting. It's almost got kind of a hopeful sound to it, doesn't it? It doesn't have like the emotional heaviness from the prior songs. Peep the octaves. Again, like I mentioned on Moneyball. Getting going and over on that higher vocal part feels like you're preparing for something, and it's the drop. I love that. If I have one comment, I want the synths louder, because I can hear them in the background, and they're going crazy. Feed the re-entry. Keep it stretched out. There it is. That is how you finish an album right there. Wow. Because on on actually a lot of rock albums, you don't use at least I'm thinking back to like 1980s. I feel like albums back then were more collections of singles rather than like the modern pop album that we think of today. But pop albums oftentimes will end with a ballad because it's like the natural way to finish, you know, a nice soft one to like kind of bring the album back down to earth. But now that I think about it, not many bands do that, do they? But for me, Night of Fireworks is the perfect conclusion song, is the perfect finale song. I'm, I'm thinking from like a live stage point of view. Imagine a concert, like a mini concert series. And the concert series is this troubleshooting album. You've gone through this roller coaster of emotion and roller coaster of sound throughout the previous nine songs on this album. You've already gotten your ballad. 
you've already gotten a couple of nice anthems. You've gotten your really high intensity songs. You've got your ridiculously fast turbocharged songs. How do you finish a song that's already got this abundance of energy? Well, you play into it, but you make it sound like this this is an ending. But there will be a next time. Like, we will see you next time, and there will be a next time type vibe. And for me, Night of Fireworks does that to a T. It's bright, it's lively, it's hopeful, and yet it still has all the necessary features for it to be a proper ex hero song. It's got the crunch, it's got the vocals, it's got the bite, it's got the pace. But it feels comforting, in a way. The other songs on this album are intense. Whether you go for, you know, like, kind of all up in your grill, like, with no matter, like, money on my mind, you go for something a little bit smoother, like, until the end of time, walking to the moon. They're doing a lot of a specific type, right? Whether it's, like, volume intensity or emotion intensity or bass intensity. Night of Fireworks is that kind of comforting middle ground with the usual characteristics of the x Hero Heroes song. And for me, with the way this album went, they couldn't have chosen a better song to finish. That was an extremely long-winded way of saying this is a good song to finish on, but you get my point. This was terrific. Now, we could probably keep it under the hour. Um, you know what? Just because I'm in the talking mood, let's do the album sample. Let me get that queued up real quick. I don't think I've ever done one of these before. Because I don't know if they did an instrumental sampler for, for Live Lock and Deadlock, but usually we don't really, I don't pay attention to samplers at all just because these drop before the full release happens and I never want to spoil myself in any capacity. It's... Especially since Enmix's previous two releases, or two previous album releases with FE304 and Expergo that I've been getting into these album samplers now. Because JYP groups are just doing it differently. Enmix are doing theirs a cappella, which is terrific and I'm very passionate about. But if x Heroes can do a live instrumental sampler for it, I'm so down. So let's check it out one time. I'll just run through it all the way. Oh, we're going. Oh, we are going out of order, aren't we? Oh, and they're not revealing the entire instrumental part. It's just the key parts. Uh, I love the drop D string. There's just so much texture and rumble to it that you can't replicate on any other instrument. I don't even know if it was in drop, drop D or what have you. I mentioned this on the title track, but having a band arrangement of double synth and double guitar is so cool, because you can do so much stuff. Hearing the synth on its own, I kind of wish it was mixed louder in the actual album now. Because the synth has such a nice, like, shrill and bite that I feel like is lost, especially when you add all the other instruments to it.
You know what I appreciate is the fact that the drummer got a proper part. It's like... In bands, drummers usually don't get a lot of front and center attention because... I mean, their instrument doesn't really allow for a lot of front and center moments. So, what what song was it that had that really crispy drum fill from uh, Guno before Chorus 2? But usually drum fills are like the only way that drummers get front and center attention. So I like that in this instrumental sampler, we're getting like members, like one or two members in different kind of arrangements that get that center moment, if you will. Drummers' parts in bands are so important because they hold the entire song, the entire band together. But they never get the attention that they deserve. So, I like that. Thought I'd comment on that, but keep her moving. sense of freedom in that guitar solo where it just was like no restrictions whatsoever we are gonna go f just like we are gonna drive off into the sunset i love that did i clock onto the fact that this double guitar part first time around because this is a dreaming girl right Again, double guitar gives you the flexibility of a lead and rhythm guitar. And because of it, you can have one that gets a little bit more melodic. You have one that holds down the song a little bit more. And it's that separation and the layering that works. we're getting the keyboards up in center for the songs that they chose because I feel like they got a little bit overlooked oh that's cool Hammond organ into a little bit of like a glockenspiel type sound I like that. I think the Hammond organ is such a cool instrument. It has a, such a nice warble to it.
that explains why Mario Ball was so low to begin with. That, that checks out. Again, I mentioned it before and I'll mention it again. I think the drop tuning is underappreciated and underutilized. I guess the double synths double up as a second percussion part, don't they? Nice flip! I like the snare he's using. Oh, it's not even a snare, it's... Is that floor tom? I kind of like that. He's got a nice crispy kit though. It's nice to listen to. Oh, Jones back on a four string this time. Yeah, Gumbel's kit is nice. It's got a nice crisp to it. Crisp sound. But it's not like short. Okay, yeah, on the instrumental, like, sampler, the balance is a lot better than on the MV. God, oh, yes, that Guno drum fill. Yeah, I like the balance on the sampler better than on the MV. I wonder why that's the case. I wonder if it's, like, an, an, an MV thing, but... That was just a little bit of fun at the end, but overall, the troubleshooting album, very, very nice. It's it's classic x heroes at this point. Tons of bite, tons of bounce, tons of just power. You, you want vocal power? You got it. You want instrumental power? You got it. You want bass power? You got it. You want emotive power? Oh, you got that as well. Love that. I still do have to say Money on My Mind is probably going to take track of the album for me just because that is, there's just something different about a high octane retro rock sounding beat that just runs away and just screams off into the distance. You can't, it's, that's hard to get a nice balance of. Money on My Mind does that perfectly and kind of makes me want to go back and listen to some 80s stuff now. But that's a lot of fun. That's a really good album, too. I would love to hear this album live. I think this entire album as a collection works so well. From top to bottom, you listen to this in order, and everything is placed in such a good spot where you can listen to it, and there aren't any like road bumps along the way. There aren't any big surprises. The sound constantly evolves in a way that feels natural. There aren't any like sudden breaks where you feel like a song is missing. It just... You press play and it goes and you just let it go until the finish and once you're at the end you want more and as is the case i want more music but that was terrific hopefully you all enjoyed it as well but that is going to be it for me today thank you all for listening along with me again hopefully you enjoyed it as much as i did one last request for me today let's work together as a community to bring a little bit of extra happiness back into the world whether it be checking with your friends and family holding the door open for somebody or even picking up a piece of trash off the street just for one small act of kindness that may brighten up someone else's day to day and know that wherever you are in the world should you ever be going through a tough time in your life for whatever reason it may be even though i'm just some guy in the internet who waffles about music in his free time know that i will always be a friend an ally and a shoulder to lean on whenever you need me so take care of yourselves, take care of each other, spread the love, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.